Well, here I am in front of this uh, museum piece, home delivery, fabricating the motor dwelling. I don't know if all those are meant to be solar panels, uh, but if they are, but in New York City, it kind of sucks to have all these other buildings next to you, which uh, give you uh, tremendous uh, shadows that would make the solar panels not very useful. But I guess in other places things could work better. And I'm, but this is not a video about these homes. It's a video about the financial markets and what's happening to the financial markets right now. As I talk to uh, some top hedge, hedge fund managers, some people who run banks, and uh, people who are friends of mine or who I know, and whose names I cannot quote for this video, but I can tell you more or less what they say. And from what I see, the opinions here are that uh, what we're going through is a deleveraging crisis. Of, there was too much, too much debt. That was issue with when Lehman went bankrupt. It was uh, capital uh, was. For every dollar of capital, it, it was it had thirty dollars of debt, and the leveraging ratios were unbelievable. In the case of a bank like J.P. Morgan, the ratio is more one to ten. So what they're doing is with Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs, they save them, but they force them to deleverage by becoming banks, just like everyone else, which I think it's doing them a favor. And then there's uh, the other banks that already are gone. So one of the issues that is circulating here is why is it that Bear Stearns and Lehman and Merrill had to be disappeared or sold for nothing, had to disappear or sold, be sold for nothing, while uh, Goldman Sachs, the bank that Paulson worked for, and Morgan Stanley, uh, were saved, okay? And why are the shareholders of the other banks, why did they get hurt so badly, less in the case of Merrill Lynch, while the shareholders of Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley did relatively much better. And is that fair or not? I leave it up to you. Then the other question here is how much toxicity is there in these mortgage instruments? That's what people don't know. I mean, is there $500 billion of mortgages that will never be paid? Are we talking about uh, $700 billion of mortgages that will never be paid? Are we talking about a trillion more, uh, a trillion dollars of mortgages that will never be paid? Uh, and, and sort of the, the difference between Main Street and Wall Street, that is, and, I, and here I side with the people who are not so pessimistic. I really don't think that there'll be so many mortgages that won't be paid. I think there was over lending and I think real estate is worth less, but I think the American consumer is hard working and creative and they'll eventually pay, will pay their debts. And I think the one thing that the plan that Paulson is putting through uh, that is positive is that I think in the end the U.S. government will hopefully buy these mortgages for very little and sell them for a lot, benefiting the American taxpayer. And that's something that left this remains to be seen. And maybe this is the opposite effect, and maybe raising the limit on the federal debt by close to a trillion is a big mistake. And actually, the country will end up with more debt and nothing to show for it. But I, I hope for the average American taxpayer which I am not one of them, because I'm a Spanish taxpayer, but I hope that for on their behalf that things go well. So that's my little report here from New York for my blog.